Brackets, brackets, and brackets. Brackets that bracket, brackets, bracketing, bracket, 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 bracket. You know when you say a word so much and it just becomes nonsense. That's kind of like bracket. Over here, you see the brackets that we broke last time, Bill from Punish Props Academy and I did. And over here, these are new ones that my friends Evan and Caitlin helped me break. And there were some changes we learned, we adjusted, we tested, we have data. So let's go over it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hello, right there. I've written some things down so that I can remember them. So last time you may have seen us, I was with Bill of Punish Props Academy and we were testing these brackets. We tested the polyalchemy elixir that went through the Morse Struder. We tested Protopasta's HTPLA. We tested Matterhacker's PLA, their PETG, and we took their PLA and we sent it through the Morse Struder. We also tested Matterhacker's Rhino and Nylon X. That was V1. So we did, well, we did the same for V2 and we added some new materials. Before we go over the data for this though, let's talk about a few things. I know that this bracket design and even this bracket design is not the most optimized bracket for what it needed to be. I designed this shape thinking that it made sense in my head and then now that we have data, I've adjusted and I made a new bracket. But still, if you wanna look at someone who used tools to their potential, go look at Stefan and CNC Kitchen. We'll put a link down in the description, but he used Fusion 360 and gave it some material and then told it to generate a shape that would withstand a certain load. And Fusion 360 using internal testing was able to design the perfect bracket to hold a closet rod, which he then put his spools on. It's a wonderful video. You should go subscribe to CNC Kitchen anyway, because Stefan is just wonderful. And the way that he says Guten Tag. Guten Tag, everybody. And Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. It's beautiful. So go find Stefan at CNC Kitchen. Go subscribe. I will wait. Go ahead. Okay, good. Welcome back. Second, I want to make it clear that I know that this test is nowhere near perfect. I can't stress enough that I am not a mechanical engineer. I just thought that if we took a bracket and we pulled at the very end of it, it would be testing it for some sort of worst case scenario. When designing these, I thought that with boards going through either little slot, either slot right at the top, the, the load would be compressed and the entirety of the top would be supporting it. I know that wasn't necessarily mechanically correct, but it's what I went with and it performed well. And all of my shelves right there, I'm looking at them, they're still holding up. Those ones too, those ones back there, everything is still holding up and so the brackets work. And the numbers that I quoted last time were for the worst case scenario. I didn't test in the same way that the spools are resting on them. Let's be honest. We generated some numbers by making things explode and then we showed it to you in slow motion. It's kind of fun. Third and foremost, we messed up last time. <sighs> the scale we were using has a button to let you select between pounds or kilograms or newtons, I think it is. I don't know, it's over there somewhere. But there's at least two things that you need to know, pounds and kilograms. And sometimes we have, well, we tried to have it set at pounds, but for some reason, the button would get bumped and it would set itself to kilograms. So just to get it out of the way, here are the official numbers for the version one bracket passes. Overlay that footage. Polyalchemy Elixir through the Morse Struder held 90 pounds. Protopasta HTPLA held 64.8 pounds. Matterhacker's PLA held 87.5 pounds. Matterhacker's PTG held 42.3 pounds. Matterhacker's PLA on the Morse Struder held 122.8 pounds. Matterhacker's Rhino held 37.7 pounds. Matterhacker's Nylon X held 39 pounds. 0.2 pounds. Those are the official numbers for the V1 brackets. Yes, we messed up last time. Yes, we didn't pay enough attention. Yes, I'm sorry. I think though, we should talk about the new bracket. And I just wanna make something abundantly clear. Right here, the new bracket I designed, I am going to upload to Gumroad and make it available for anybody who wants to download that bracket. That's not invalidating anything to do with this bracket and the My Mini Factory contest with the prizes supplied by Matterhackers, still valid, still it's on this bracket. 
This bracket will be uploaded to the Gumroad link along with this one. And so if you've already purchased this bracket for $2, first, thank you. Second, you will get the version two bracket for no charge. Now let's talk about this bracket. Uh, let's pick a good one. Let's pick, there we go. Look at this bracket right here. So if we want to compare against last time, there are more trusses within the bracket, which use nature's strongest shape, according to my nine-year-old, the triangle. And it holds phenomenally more. In tests on Fusion 360, when you can do the stress analysis, just putting pressure here and holding this here, and it held quite a bit. In fact, if you take this one and you twist, it, you can see that it twists and bends, whereas uh, this one does not. The entire structure here is more sturdy. It's a better bracket, but how much better or worse did it perform than these? That's what we're here to find out. Before we get into the materials that we've tested in V1 versus V2, we need to talk about the materials that we just threw in there just to kind of get an idea with. And so we're going to start with, well, we're going to start with this one. This is Zortrax Z-Hips, hips being high impact polystyrene and it was printed on the Zortrax, and it's gorgeous. It looks gorgeous, but it failed. It failed, it, it didn't do well. It failed at 14.6 pounds, 14.6 pounds. So we set it over here in the pile of Misfit Toys. Next up, Polymaker's Polymax PLA. A lot of people were curious about that, thinking this would be a super duper strong material that should do a good job. How well did it do? As you can see, it did break, and the Polymaker Polymax PLA was able to withstand 60.2 pounds. These are all the pieces that I recovered, so looks kind of like kind of like that. Good job, Polymaker. Finally, you know, Protopasta HT PLA is one of those that can withstand the annealing process without changing shape too much. So I printed one on HT PLA, and then I annealed it, and then we tortured it, and we ended up with a bracket that could withstand 84.4 pounds, 84.4 pounds. Okay. That's not too bad, look at that. It just kind of broke there, and it broke apart there, and it broke apart right there. Not too bad, I mean, good job. Last time, you remember the polyalchemy elixir filament. It was, and it was sent through the Morstruder. It withstood 90 pounds before it pulled away right here. Well, this one, this is the polyalchemy elixir through the Morstruder and with the different setup on the bracket, it withstood 150 pounds, 150 pounds, pulling down right there. That's a 66% improvement in the weight it can withstand at the end. 66%, that's insane, that's great. 150 pounds, it's plastic. Next up, we've got the Protopasta HTPLA. And last time it was able to withstand 64.8 pounds hanging off the end of it. But with this new shape, we were able to withstand 90.8 pounds hanging off the end. That's a 40% improvement just by adding some triangles. That's crazy. Next up is the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA that exploded last time and it withstood 87.5 pounds hanging off the end of it. But with this new shape, we noticed that it still exploded, but there was no failure right here. There's no failure. And it withstood more weight. It withstood 97.6 pounds, which means that it's 11.5% better just by adding triangles. I'm digging these triangles. The Matter Hackers Build Series PETG was up next, and last time it withstood 42.3 pounds hanging off the end of it. And it wasn't an explosive failure. It just bent this. And this was part of the reason why we changed the design because lots of things were failing right here. We knew it needed to be supported. And so that's why we went with this shape. And even though it still failed here, the rest of it was intact. And so we can know where to change it if we want to do it again. But the new one withheld 51.8 pounds from the end of it, which means that it is a 22% increase in weight in that, that is able to hold out here. And that's, again, thanks to triangles. We do need to talk about the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA, and we need to talk about the more Struder on the Taz 6. It seems clear that the thicker the plastic, meaning the thicker that the, the extrusions are that you're printing, the more strength you're going to have in your bracket. Case in point, 
this. This withheld 122.8 pounds last time. Look at that. Look at that. That's just, it's amazing. And it, and it failed and we, we printed it again with the more Struder, only in this new shape. And it withheld 176 pounds on the end. 176 pounds on the end. It's plastic with three screws into wood. It's plastic. That just blows my mind. And that is a 43% increase in the weight it can hold. So yay triangles. The Matter Hacker's Rhino, the co-polyester last time, it withheld 37.7 pounds. And this is what it looked like when it got destroyed. This one though, in the new shape, it did withhold 51.8 pounds, which is a 37.4% increase in the weight it can hold. Well, it broke right here and it broke right here. But other than that, it's still intact. And this space here, reinforced by all the trusses, the triangles, it's a good shape. And so we kind of have an idea of where we need to reinforce things if we want to hold even more weight, which is great. What other rhyming words can I have with great? Eight, mate, bait, rhyming. Last and certainly not least is the Matter Hacker's Nylon X. It's a carbon fiber infused nylon. And if you look here, this bracket withstood most everything we threw at it, except for breaking right here. So it collapsed the area between there. And obviously if we had had the boards in here and testing with spools, then it may not have happened and it may have, might have performed better, but we wanted to do the same thing to another one. And so this one withstood 39.2 pounds at the end of it. This one withstood 48.2 pounds. And it's a 22% increase in the weight that it can hold. It did fail spectacularly. So let's, let's take a look. What have we learned from all of this? I don't know. I'm going to be honest and say, I don't know. This isn't really a strength test. This is more of a materials test. This is more of a model test because this, this doesn't give a clear indication of the strength of a material. This is more about how a material performs in a certain shape. I know that hanging the weight or using a ratchet on the end isn't the best way. I know people suggested hanging a bucket of water or a bucket of sand, both of which were unavailable. At the time, we did have ratcheting straps though, and since we tested these with the ratcheting strap, we needed to test these with the ratcheting strap. So while I'm not exactly clear what sort of results this can provide, there's two things from this that we can take. One, we performed the test in a similar fashion. So what we did to these, we did to these. And so regardless of the testing parameters, everything was treated the same. And I think that's, that's one of the most important things you can do as far as reproducing a scenario. Second, I think this really opens my eyes to filaments because, well here, let me go down the list. The PLA from Matter Hackers that went through the more Struder, right? This is it right here. All we did is add some trusses. There we go, right here. And the difference between this and this is an extra 50 pounds at the end that it can hold, right? Yeah, 122, 176, 50 pounds, 50 more pounds here because we added a few triangles in there. Listen, a couple of these and they would hold the full Joel. <laughs> no joke. In the end though, uh, I think it's important to look at what we've accomplished because I think we've opened some eyeballs. I think we've made clear that, hey, PLA can perform or Wow, Rhino and Nylon X, they're really great materials, but maybe they're not the best for a bracket. Oh, wow, the more Struder, if we can increase the width of the extrusions going out of the nozzle, then we're going to build ourselves a piece that can withstand more weight. It's gonna be more solid. It's going to hold more. And so the test we didn't do that I wanted to do, I wanted to build something using a 0.4 nozzle that was nearly solid plastic, just like the plastic that comes from the Lulzbot Taz 6 and the Morstruder. I just didn't have the time. A really, really big thanks to Evan and Caitlin for helping test all the brackets. They're a wonderful husband and wife maker team that if you don't know about them, you really should. We'll put a link down in the description to their channel. I highly suggest you subscribe because they're in the process of making some incredible things. Also a big thanks to Lady Longshanks and Chinbeard. You know them as Bill and Brittany from Punish Props Academy for letting me use their wonderful location to test all this and possibly upset their day. I did pay them in potato chips. At the end of the day, I hope you've been inspired. I hope you've been educated and I hope you had a really good time. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five. Red bracket, 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 bracket. Hey, look! I'm gonna be proper hey, and safe from the get-go. You know what? I moved one of the holes. Need more data. <laughs> Evan, as you may or may not know, 
is an accomplished engineer around the globe. Where'd that come from? Oh, oh. oh it's just bending. Ooh, ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind.